All right, we're back. It's the bonus break. Hey, what's going on, Jeff, Jeremy? We got Alex and Monica here from Refined. Uh, Alex and Monica Villacana. Cheers, guys. Good to see you guys again. Yes, great hey, to be it's back. Great, great to be back. Uh, you know, a lot of people getting lots of great feedback as far as, you know, uh, you know, holiday cocktails and what you guys are doing with your holiday cocktail kit. Today, we're going to be doing another cocktail, uh, getting to know a little bit about the program at Refined. Refined is a distillery up in Paso Robles, also with, uh, with, with uh, Villacana Wines, right? Yeah, no. So uh, our distillery is nestled right inside the winery. Um, actually, now I should say our winery is nestled inside the distillery yeah. as we've been growing. Um, but it's, uh, it is, uh, it's a cool uh, kind of unique thing to do if you're out wine tasting or if you just want to look for something different. Um, we're right here on the west side of Paso Robles, and uh, we have a tasting room that's open Thursday through Sunday where you can come and try all of our spirits. Now, uh, Alex and Monica, a question for you. Does the wine side of the operations get a little jealous about the spirit side of the operations because the spirits have – kind of the new thing. I know you guys have been around and you're the first ones to do it, but like, you know, is there some sibling rivalry that goes on between the two? Yeah. I would say no. And it's just because the, the distillery needs the winery in order for its existence because Refined was literally born from, uh, from the unused juice that the winery was creating. So um, it's a symbiotic relationship. So they both need each other. Without the winery, the distillery wouldn't be. Yeah. And, and on top of that, it's, you know, when we were just a winery, you know, there was a certain number of cases that I had to make to basically make everything pencil out. Now it's, you know, they might get an extra barrel. I might do a little bit different process and kind of experiment more. So actually the wines probably get more tender loving care now that I have the distillery as kind of that side operation. And so it's, a, as Monica said, it's a, it's a totally symbiotic relationship. And, you know, the sustainability part for me as a, as a farmer is the, is the huge part. You know, on average now we're saving somewhere between 100 and 200 tons of grapes that would uh, be wasted otherwise. And, you know, for me, that's just, it's just crazy. Cause I know, you know, I farm my little vineyard and, you know, we get 30, 40 tons off of that. And to think that I would have to farm, you know, four times as much and that would get wasted is just crazy to think about it. And so that's the, the, the kind of the plus side is, you know, I think the wine wins and the distillery wins as well. Well, it's great because, you know, I know there's waste in everything that's made. Every product is going to have some sort of waste somewhere. The fact that you guys have figured out how to do this. I know people love it in Paso Robles, but people have to love it that come from the valley, from northern and southern California and other parts of the United States, that they get to come somewhere and not only enjoy the wine, but a local product that is different that they can take home that is distilled right here, a spirit. And that's what makes part of the tasting experience a little bit more unique because a lot of times people are coming here, they're like, wow, we saw a distillery. No way, there's a distillery in Paso. And then we start them with the wines and they're like, well, wait a minute. But by the time they're through the wine flight, we have prepped them and primed them for the story of the distilled spirits. And then they leave here going, aha, that's what happens. The, the distillery is literally made from the juice that came from the winery. And so they leave knowing just so much so much more about the whole process of how things are made and how, how things are used and then um, as alex was saying with the sustainability of it um, you know we're getting juice from some 25 30 other wineries here in paso robles so refined um the name refined really comes from finding a reuse for those grapes and then refining it into spirits but it really is paso's brand because so many wineries are contributing to the base material that makes our spirits our spirits so that's kind of cool too yeah for sure alex and monica from refined distillery they're up in Pass rubbles off vineyard drive go to uh, refineddistillery.com they've got a great holiday kit today we're making something that's not quite comes in the holiday kit but it's a favorite and you can still get it at refined um we're doing the blueberry gimlet today and alex let's let's start making this drink we'll kind of talk as we go along but uh we start with your gin right yeah no so we start with refined gin um this is actually one of our original two spirits um so gin for all intents and purposes is just a flavored vodka um as a winemaker though this was a lot of fun because it was like putting a blend together you know i've been doing blends for wines for you know 30 plus years um but this one was blending botanicals and you could really fine tune it so it was almost like a, a you know a blending 101 course for me and so I worked with another winemaker. We put together a blend and ended up with seven botanicals. I uh, always have to have juniper for a gin. Uh, and then we have lemon and orange peel, grains of paradise, uh, orris root, and lavender that, that round it out. Um, we add it at the final distillation. We actually steep the botanicals as well as have the alcohol vapor pass through it uh, to make this really lovely grape-based gin. So in this cocktail, we're actually going to use four ounces of our gin. 
Um, so all of our cocktails tend to be a little on the boozy side, but when you're talking <laughs> with really good spirits, um, you know that even with a little higher alcohol, they tend to be really well balanced. Um, so we're going to do about four ounces of the um, of the gin, and then we're going with this uh, cool. Uh, it's a, a, a a simple um, a blueberry mint syrup uh, from Route 23, uh, which is a little craft mixer company. And we're going to do about an ounce and a half of that. And we're putting this in this shaker with ice. And then we are going to use three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Which is about, is that about a half of a lime? It's about a half of a lime, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm using today. And I, usually whenever you put up three quarters of, a, of lemon or lime, I usually just do about a half of a lime. I have one of these. Uh, you can buy these online, Amazon, or any yeah. kitchen store. Little juicer. They're pretty yep. They're pretty fancy, and they're pretty they handy. Yeah. Yeah. I think this thing was like five bucks. I mean, and, it, and it's worth it because, I mean, just, just for doing this. Absolutely. No, that, we have a little corner Mexican market down the street, and they just hang in there because – you know, and they're so convenient. I probably get one every three or four months because we wear them out around here. So, uh, <laughs> but the thing with any of these cocktails is, is feel free to make adjustments to the ingredients. If you like yours boozier, add a little bit more gin. If you like yours a little bit um, tartar, add a little bit more lime and citrus. So it, it just, it, it, this is a guideline. And then depending on how you like your cocktail, some people like sweet cocktails, then you're going to add more of the mixer. So it's just a, a general guideline to start with. Yep. And then we're in a shaker. With gin, you could actually stir it or shake it. I tend to like to shake it just because I think it gets all the ice crystals broken up a little bit more. And then you have a cocktail. It was great. I give it a good shake until that shake is nice and cold. Now, Jeff, you're, uh, you're, you're working in the studio, so you don't have a – do you have a shaker? I'm quietly shaking. <laughs> <laughs> People are in the other room. <laughs> We're like shaking with full verb over here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're shaking on behalf of you. Uh, you. I, I got some rosemary to garnish it with. I just went to the garden and just picked some rosemary in there, but you can obviously throw whatever um, into it. And you can and serve this in a martini glass, right? You can serve it up. You can serve it over the rocks. But, I mean, you can serve it really in any glass but or a goblet, right? Yep, exactly. 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 And we have, like, an old-school martini glass going here, too. So, You know what you need to do, Monica, and, and Alex, yours looks good, too. But uh, you need to do a tutorial video series that accompanies um, this at refineddistillery.com on how to make your cocktail pop because – this is what I got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, a little different. Okay. I'll do a tutorial. I'll start a series of that. Hey, look what I got. It's pretty close, huh? Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. Look at the, the color. The color is too. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, I don't Cheers. know if Jeff has, has an actual shaker because that really makes the difference, too. It'll get that least little head of foam on top. Yeah. This is really good. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. No, that blueberry mint uh, mix just really pairs nicely with our gin. Um, you know, the nice thing is when you do the, the higher amount of gin as well, that gin actually shows through. And, you know, when you're buying craft spirits, it's really, you know, you want to you want to be able to taste that base material. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, why should I spend all this money um, on an expensive bottle and then put it in a cocktail mix? Well, you know, for me, it's, it's just like when you want a, a good steak dinner or something like that, you're going to get the best cut of meat you can, even though you're going to season it as well. You want that base to be the best you can. And so if you start with a really high quality uh, craft spirit, it's okay to make cocktails with it. Just right. make sure that you don't bury it below too many different I mean, uh, You're not going to go to a uh, diner, uh, you know, like a Denny's to get a steak. You're going to go to Jocko's or you're going to go to Ember or you're going to go to wherever you go uh, yeah. because they use the highest quality of meat. I mean, if you could get Wagyu, you're going to get Wagyu. So, yep. uh, dude, I totally get it. And it's totally worth it. And these last, I mean, these bottles uh, will last you a very, even if you're drinking them hard, they still last you because like we, we just did right there. We did, what did we do? F uh, four ounces of gin? Yeah. So four ounces of gin. I mean, so. And it made us two cocktails, one for you guys. Yeah, so um, you know, out of the bottle, you probably get like twelve different cocktails. So I mean, uh, it's it's it definitely goes a long way. So even though it's a you know a forty four dollar bottle of gin, you know, you regularly pay forty four dollars for a bottle of wine that you're going to finish it at night. So um, anyway, it's a uh, it, it's fun. It also is it's another expression of what we're doing here in Pasarola. So it's uh, it's something you can basically take home, show off to your uh, relatives that are coming from out of the area, or you can actually ship it anywhere in California and you can show them what's going on here on the Central Coast. The other great thing about our gin is because um, it does have those seven distinct botanicals in it, and Alex has done such a great job in blending them so that they um, 
they have these delicate layers versus just like all juniper, is most of our customers actually like to drink it neat. They just like to put a little bit in the glass and just sip on it. And um, and so we find that that quite often is that people aren't taking our gin and making them into cocktails or actually drinking it. I think so. most of the people that don't like gin are the ones who they've had gins and they just don't complement each other, the different botanicals that well. It's not balanced, like a, like you want right. anything balanced. No. Yeah, and, and on top of that, because we're starting with a grape based spirit, grape based spirit has a really unique soft characteristic on the finish that we haven't talked about. And, uh, and all of our spirits, our grape based spirits have it. And it's almost a sweet kind of finish on them, um, mm. which helps do two things. One, it makes the spirit softer by itself, but it also coats your mouth and lets all those beautiful flavors kind of linger on your palate. And even from the whiskeys to the, the vodkas, it, it's got this, it, I think, you know, with a lot of the traditional uh, whiskeys and the bourbons in the, in the United States, they punch you in the face with, with that. And you don't get that. You get that. That it's I don't know how to describe it. I think you put it best. It just it rounds off and it's not as harsh, which makes for amazing cocktails, but it also makes for a great experience on the rocks that you're not choking it down. Yeah. You know, it's this great point, Jeff, because I, I tell this to a lot of people when they come for tasting, um, and especially people who love Paso wines and come here for wine tasting, is a vintner in Paso or, or San Luis Obispo County, when they make their wines, they're not gonna just say, here, sample our wine. Can you taste all that oak? <laughs> no, it's all balanced. And so it's the same thing here with the with the gin, whether it's the gin or the whiskey, um, is that the fact that a vintner, because Alex has been making wine for 28 years now, is making it, he's highlighting the delicate layers of balance versus saying, taste all that juniper. Um, and it just makes <laughs> You know, no, I mean, some of the biggest brands I could think of, you know, that juniper is so strong. It turned me off from gin for a long time. And the thing I always had with spirits uh, cocktails was they were so spirit forward that they were just so hot. And they were just, it turns, I think, a lot of people off. When you drink something like this, it's so well balanced. You barely taste the spirit in it. It's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it goes down smooth. You almost have to be careful because you're like, give me a couple more of those. <laughs> <laughs> that bottle might not last as long as you think. <laughs> right on. Well, it's always great to see you guys. Guys, happy holidays to you. Um, before we go, though, besides the gin, and Jeff brought up your rye, rye whiskey, will you just run down everything that you guys make? What can people expect when they go to refineddistillery.com or come up to the tasting room off in your drive? Yeah, so um, we actually produce about eight different spirits. Um, our core is our vodka and our gin. Uh, but then we also have a cucumber-flavored vodka, which we're getting to the end of the cucumber season, but um, it still makes lovely cocktails. Uh, we do a barrel finished vodka, which is our, our vodka put into whiskey barrels and aged just like you would a whiskey. Uh, we have our rye whiskey. Uh, we have a limoncello. Um, we're at the tail end of our wheat whiskey, uh, which is uh, a locally grown wheat and barley mix. Um, and then uh, I think that, did I cover most of them? So you got vodka, cucumber vodka, gin, mm -hmm. barrel finished vodka, rye whiskey, wheat whiskey, and limoncello. limoncello. I, oh, and we do do very small quantities of a bourbon. Um, yeah. But that's not out right now. You're not going to see it on the website or in the tasting room. <laughs> whoa, 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 hold on. I think uh, Jeff and Jeremy need to be the uh, give you, you know, some tasting notes on that. <laughs> oh, we're, we're looking forward to it. We actually really have a production this year. Um, you know, we're working with Firestone Walker to make the, uh, the base material for us. And so uh, about every uh, two weeks this, uh, this coming year, we'll actually have about 2,000 gallons of beer delivered, and uh, we'll be turning it into – more bourbon, rye, and wheat whiskey. Uh, so, but we're gonna have to be a little patient. It'll take a few years to get it get it aged to the right point. Well, right on, guys. Well, cheers. Thanks for having us. Refineddistillery.com. Happy holidays. Happy uh, holidays. Can't wait to make more of these cocktails, man. Cheers. Please stop by the uh, the distillery and see us.